Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to uh, just talk about um, cockpits on airplanes, and I have something uh, a little older and a little little newer that we can show. Um, I'm not going to be doing any actually building, but I'm going to show you some exhibits. Um, how you can build to your own taste. So um, the first thing, we'll start with this one. This one's in an earlier stage. Um, you want to get the fuselage, to me, together as fast as you can because when you, you know, when you're building the, the cockpit in one half of the fuselage, the fear is that when you put it together, there's funny business. Um, doesn't quite snap into place. So for me, my style is I like to get the cockpit together as fast as I can and then um, airbrush it. So you can see, I'll, I'll hand it around. I've shaded this. This is a 36231 FS. Um, interior gray so this will be a u.s navy phantom but you'll see that i will actually once i get it to that stage i i for one don't like to add a ton of detail to the cockpit until i put the model together because i fear that things can get knocked a lot of dust can get into the model no matter your despite your best um, masking so this is where i kind of start you can see this one um, is just painted uh, like interior gray, dark gold gray, and I'll pass it around. You can see I've shaded it. Now, when you're painting your cockpit, let's just talk a minute. I don't want to turn this into an airbrushing seminar, but you want to kind of use an overhead lighting method because things can just get lost in the cockpit. So what I'll do is I have a very simple formula. I paint the cockpit the original color, and then I darken it, and I go into the shadows, and then I add light to the original cockpit color, give it a little bit of overhead lighting effect. Then I go back with a diluted mixture of the original cockpit color to pull it all together. And then I might just really lighten it up, maybe almost take white and just dust and hit some of the high points. So even though this is a mundane uh, gray cockpit, you can see that it does have a little bit of pop when you look at it. Now, what's going to follow is I'm, I, I, you know, I could scratch build a lot of stuff, but I kind of like playing with, um, with these little sets. And I brought the one for this, this plane, um, these little color etch things. Now, I'm going to tell you something. People get all worked up. Oh, the gold gray isn't the same color as the cockpit. Like, who cares? The things are made in diff by different manufacturers. Um, so I think it just makes it more interesting. So sure, is this a little bit lighter than maybe some areas in there? You got me on that one, okay? Um, but it hasn't really detracted, I don't think, from, from the end effect. So these things are all adhesive. I think some of them, you can peel it off. These ones aren't. And, and I just like to, once I get the plane almost painted, I'll probably will paint this, and I'll probably put in the cockpit once the plane is painted. So I'll build the cockpit from the outside in. I don't have any problem doing that. Okay, and I'll show you, here's one that I, I kind of did right here. So I'll pass it around, you can just see again, this isn't gonna change your day, but you can see it's got a bit of pop, and again, just to take care of it, I appreciate it not uh, um, doing a, a basketball dribble off the floor. Um, a couple of, um, and I'll just introduce a couple of things before I get into it. Here is a Corsair cockpit, and I don't even know what I'm doing with this, but you can see, um, and I'll talk about the elements on this. So again, um, don't just don't, well, just handle it on the ends, um, and you can see that there's a lot to that. And so, let's talk about what goes into it. I mean, the scratch building aspects, of them and I don't know where to start because um, if you have any questions just jump in but I'll just show you what I do first of all I paint it and then I shade it you can add all kinds of wiring I mean it's all just sheet plastic it's you know uh, sprue stretch sprue round stuff anything you can you can use right so let's talk about research material that's where you start this is an original flight manual from a Grumman Hellcat from World War II and uh, you can see that it's actually amazing when you figure there's no computer graphics, the, the way that they can produce information. So I'll just show you. Um, I get into this pretty, uh, pretty in depth, but you can see this has got lots of drawings, 
of things in the cockpit. And then I'll try to pull out the, uh, they usually have some pretty good graphics. But this thing, these are rare, there you go, that's the kind of thing you get. Um, totally classified at the time, but not so much, not so much now. But it will tell you, for example, the differences between the Hellcat 3 and the Hellcat 5, which are two different variants. It just gets down to knobs and switches, right? But the first thing I'm going to say is, you know, it's your model. If you want to go crazy on the cockpit, um, you can do that. Or if you just want to, I'm going to show you some ways that you can just do it really quickly. Now, I generally sand off everything that the kit gives you, and I'll build my own. My my Hellcat that I, or my Tomcat that I built in 1975 or 85, um, I actually drilled holes into the consoles and inserted pieces of sprue for every toggle switch underneath it, sanded it off, and then um, just took it that way. It looks very realistic because the toggle switches all work. This Hellcat, again, I'm going to hand around. You can see it. Um, this is a 24 scale Hellcat. This is, you know, I think as far as my work goes, one of my, one of my better efforts. I've, I've had some good cockpits um, because to me, it's, it's just where my eye goes on a model, right? I mean, you want to see what a cockpit's not going to win you a model show, but I put it this way, it's not going to lose it for you either um, if it gets down to one model over the other. So, well, things you can do, we'll just start with basic painting and construction. So you've painted it, okay? You paint it your colors that you like. The next thing, I don't like to hand paint anything. I know that Adam gets great results with his hand painting, but I'm not, uh, I'm not I, I airbrush everything. I will even mask off little things in the cockpit and airbrush them. I airbrush everything. It's just a, it's a sickness that uh, it works for me. But um, I, you know, I, I applaud those that can uh, do a great job with brush paint. I do brush paint, but I mean, if I can avoid it, I, I don't. So once you do that, here are some little tricks that I'll show you. Details in your cockpit. Let's say you paint a console black. Right? And you want to give it some pop. You take a Prisma marking pencil and you just lightly rub it across the console. It's going to pick up all the high points. That's great. I think everybody knows that. This is not, um, this is not worth the gas that you, uh, you use to get here tonight. Everybody knows about these things. But you might not know about these things. I've been uh, really using these little micron markers. Like these things are tiny. And you can actually, you know, do your panels with them. Um, on a Phantom I have at home, I actually went around a, a, an area on the model and, you know, tightened up a difficult area that I masked. So this one, the red one, what I plan to do is on the landing gear doors on U.S. Navy jets, they're red, and I was just thinking I can just probably go around it and save a lot of masking and uh, hand painting. So um, I got these at uh, Cur Michael's, uh, Michael's. Curry's. Bijan. Bijan, yeah. Uh, or, some of them are down to point zero zero five. Well, this is the smallest one that you can you can get. Right? You can you can see them if you have them. You know, there's red and black. So these are good for just touch up little detail things that you want to do. I'm just showing you guys um, things that you can uh, you can run into. So that is. Yep. And is that ink permanent? Or do you have to be careful? Well, I'd let it dry. I wouldn't go no, in there. Yeah. I mean, it won't. It should be. Yeah. 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 I'm anticipating it being permanent. <laughs> um, um, it what I found is it will be, it will run if you go over it hand-handedly, like I normally seal it with future. Yeah. I just give it a dust, let it dry, don't move it, yeah. and after that you can do whatever you want. They, they will smudge if you handle them. I, I agree with Adam. I, why, why risk it, right? It's all about risk-reward. There's no reward in going, look, does it smudge, right? I mean, what's the reward? <laughs> the reward, it doesn't smudge, right? It's, I work in risk management. It's all about risk and reward with everything I do. So, thanks. So, that is, um, we'll, we'll look at a few other things here in a moment. Um, let's look at some other tools. The infamous Waldron punch and die set. Um, can't, to me, can't scratch build a cockpit without it. I've got two of them here. You know, it's uh, to your engineering types. I know Dennis made a great set a few years ago. I don't know, I can uh, put a plug in for uh, Glass Enterprises. I don't know if he's still selling them, but <laughs> this, is, um, this is just the basic punch set. So I can punch out discs. And that is the 
The real problem with modeling is punching out perfect circles. I can punch out masking tape to mask. I can punch out anything with this, right? Um, where would you get those? Yeah. You can get these ones from the former Roll models. Somebody's taken over the Waldron line. Roll, R-O-L-L. -L. And if you Google Roll, somebody, they're in Minnesota, somebody just bought the company okay. and they're still keeping the, um, well, Roll bought the, um, the Waldron line. And uh, this is the mic, this one here, I'll show you what I've done here. This is actually really neat. Um, this is the micro. Um, punch sub miniature punch and die set and this one has I mean I was you know because I'm a friend of the family I remember back in the 80s I was one of the only people to have when you want to put this on your nostalgia night and everybody and their brother wanted to borrow my punch set so they go home and punch out discs well you know my name's Tucker not sucker eventually you know I get it back with all my 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 uh, my punches bent and everything and thanks Lair you know you saved me 60 bucks and so anyways you can see there's a tiny one right there a tiny. Oh, now what I did with that, I'm going to show you this cockpit, I punched out toggle switches out of 20,000 sheet card and then I, you can see all the toggle switches in the, hell, in the cockpit of this Hellcat. So this one is more expensive, a lot more, and the answer is no, you can't take it home and bring it back next month. <laughs> this one, you can see all the different punches, the sizes. So this, to me, is a staple for um, scratch building things in your cockpit. You can do many things with it. Again, I'm teaching you how to fish here, right? So you can go home and, and if you have an idea, as you know where I am, this is, to me, the industry's best kept secret. The old Waldron um, cockpit detail sets and radio sets. Like there's nothing that looks like metal in a cockpit like these things. This thing that you just saw here, you can see a lot of detail. Like the, these things came out in like the 80s or 90s and they're unbelievable. I think um, like in a, as you were mentioning about the bunch of die set, is role model carrying that. They carry all these too. Okay. My favorite one. Are those jackals or photo -ish? No, they're metal. It's metal. Oh. Feel it. Yeah. Oh. oh, it's real metal. Yeah, it's metal. Oh my God. So when you, when you cut it with an X-Acto blade or punch it out, it looks like metal because it is metal. Now, the one that I really like, like look at the detail on this, Adam. I, I use the radio set. <laughs> this one I use for all kinds of generic work in my cockpits. But you can see, look at the detail on that. It just looks like it's... It's just stamped onto. Um, so, um, how long ago did you get these? Are you hanging on to No, I got them a couple of years ago. I got a good stockpile. I'm I'm a, like a model survivalist. I've got lots of things. But you rule models has these. That's what. Or they did. Now here, this is the one. Here's where you feed your teach. You know, I'm going to teach you to fish, and then you can survive for years. This is the American aircraft instrument. So with my punch set, I just punch out all these instruments and make my own and make my own uh, cockpits or, or instrument panels if I choose to right so you can still hand those around but these Waldron things I think um, they are one of the best products you can get them in 48th 32nd and some 21 24th and 72 uh, I don't believe they do. Se they touch seventy two, Adam. It's, uh, and I don't think they touch it. But so that is um, that's a little bit about some of the products. And of course, you've got your, you know, your Edward products, which are, I think, you know, I'm not. You're not going to go wow, Larry. What's that E word? Um, these Archer. I make all kinds of things. I collect little bits when I go to model shows. There's Archer generic placards. So I put, you'll see in this cockpit here, there's lots of placards. These are neat. These come from a, a car company. And you look at the little, little donuts on the end. So those are, those are tiny, tiny little metal pieces. So you can do a lot of scratch building in your cockpits or on your, your mechanical animals, whatever those things are. You can put all these little bits on it, right? And, uh, and actually do a lot with them. Yeah. I just cut them with an exacto blade. Yeah. But the secret is, is that when they're in the middle, they're a little tougher, Tim, because it gets a little bit, you got to put pressure and just do a rough cut, then take it out and just 
edge it. Nice. And you'll see it. There are these things are on here. Like you can see them when you hold it up. You can see this thing shine, and you can see all kinds of these placards on here, right? D U C A. Yeah, U C A. Yeah. U C A. Now, no one's listening to me on this one. What has changed my modeling life is the Tamiya quick dry glue. The heck is that? This one here. The extra thin, this one here. Because I'll tell you what you can do with it. This stuff dries so fast. I wouldn't I don't even use Tamiya extra thin. This stuff dries so fast that it does not even attack the paint. So what I've done, what I can do is I could actually paint this with you know navy blue and run this right along here and it would fill the seam without attacking the paint it's unbelievable it's stuff it's yeah, very hot and what you so what i can do with the cockpit is i could lay a photo etch part on the plastic and just dab it and it'll just it'll never move this stuff this stuff dries so fast there's no way you could almost put two parts together with the glue on it it would just go just don't the, leave the cap open. Well, well you have to leave the cap open because it keeps you awake um <laughs> So, but this stuff. Don't leave it because it will. Damage clear. Yeah. Well, any, any anything will, right? Yeah. But this stuff for kit assembly, I don't use anything else. Like this, to me, that to me, a uh, super thin is a great glue adhesive whatever cement but you know it you, you put it on and it kind of leaves some funniness right you got to sand this stuff you can actually use like i told you i i can use paint on paint with this stuff and leave no residue adam it's unbelievable you could just dab it and you you won't believe it and you can glue photo etch with a plastic glue and well i i well if you've got like a plastic surface you put it on you could just put it and it'll run around it and it'll just adhere it to the surface right without flooding this stuff i mean take it back and use it try it on your model before you leave it's it's great uh, stuff you don't, you don't use you don't use that just to tack and then ca on no i use ca if i was gonna i'm really good at little bits of ca right i mean basic techniques in your cockpit when you're applying ca everybody likes to dab it from above what i do you know i use old exacto blades often and i'll take this the photo etch part and i'll just rub it from the side and then I'll just kind of put the glue on instead of dabbing it because it's hard to get a dab. I'll just rub the glue from the side and then I use X-Acto knife to pick up the little parts and put them in place, right? So now I'm gonna tell you another little trick that I've learned that'll really help you. If you put something in the cockpit, say you put the, you crazy glue the stick in the cockpit and you don't like it and everybody's, oh my, I showed this trick years ago and everybody's, oh my God, I'm in grief, right? What am I gonna do? Just take a bit of this stuff, dab it around the bottom of the stick and you'll be able to move it and you'll move it right to where you want it. I've actually readjusted things that I've crazy glued with this stuff without any damage whatsoever. So the, other, the other thing, uh, just yep. to kind of uh, promote that stuff. Um, I have been <laughs> nice. Uh, that smells like air with some very though. thin. It's acetone based. That's uh, why. Sheet styrene. Uh, extra five hour less. And I would be very afraid to use Tamiya just the, the regular stuff. Yeah, it'll slag. Yes. This I have used it. Um, I'll try to remember. I don't know about next month. By the way, I'll try to bring it in next month to show you. That'll wake you up. Has, I, I, that's the reason I bought this. I it wasn't kind of a car. My wife would smell, it smell that. That's really cool. Cool. Uh, done anything, oh, wow. anything, any serious damage. This stuff. I'll show you in this Hellcat cockpit when I bring it around um, to show you. You want to make cushions. You want to make, I, I made a really neat cushion. So what I did is I just made a cushion out of compound and then before it solidified, I just took my little like ponce wheel and I put stitching, just lightly touched it and put stitching. You'll see what I've done in here. Um, I built um, the dust cover on the stick right in there out of compound. And then I took my, actually one of my little punches and just touched it around and then I put all the cleats. Uh, I punched out metal, little metal discs, and you'll see the cleats um, holding the dust cover down. So easily done, right? And uh, so I'm gonna hand this around. Now you're gonna see a lot of the techniques that I've talked about tonight are in here. 
okay? Another thing Waldron makes, oxygen hoses. That's my favorite. Like, actually corrugated oxygen hoses in 48, 30 second, and 24 scale anything. And they're, and they're, they're rubber. And you can just wrap them around anything. They're amazing. How, That's, you, you, how, how old is some of the stock you have on those? I'm, I'm just curious. Have I have stuff from the 80s. So nothing's deteriorating? No. I have stuff from when I started the model club okay. back in the old days, right? When So your seat belts, you know, basic stuff. If you guys have any questions, I mean, everybody knows about the products. You just have to find something that works. But here's my big, my big one. My, to me, a Tomcat that I built in the 80s, I, you know, it won the IPMS Nationals. And I think maybe it won because of its seat belts, but, not, you know, the rest of it. Um, <laughs> but what I did is back then I was playing hockey and I got cut for stitches and I went in the hospital and then I had an epiphany while I was getting stitched up that I, this is surgical tape has got a weave to it. So what I, you can do is lance it and make your own seat belts out of it. And then if you put a wash on it, is, I mean, you can rip off a piece if you want some. I mean, everybody, I, I told Dave Brown when he was in business, we should just tear off a piece and sell it for $8. <laughs> like in the, uh, you know, because he said, everybody, I, I've used this on my armor to make all the straps to hold the stowage down. And that's where it's, it's I've kind of, uh, yeah, uh, this is from like 81 and it's still alive. So it's still, it's still, the adhesive is still there and you'll see it on this seat. Now, again, be very careful. Just hold this in the palm of your hand. This is an ejection seat for a 30 second scale crusader that I've been grappling with. And you'll see that you can see the belts. You can just hold it out like that and you can see it. You can see the belts and all the detail on it. Um, it's uh, Can you still buy that? Wow. I think so. Can I see the... If you want some, just, they'll just give you some. But. It's probably just medical tape. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's just suture tape, right? Right. That's all it is. There's probably some medical supply store. I'm sure that you can get it. Um, so, getting injured in a hockey game. See how that can you uh, talk a little bit about how you would represent uh, instruments? Like, uh, do you do you uh, replicate the glass faces and that kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, there's different techniques. Um, you can, you know, with some of the. Um, the, the pro some of the, the products that you get now like this I think you could um, these things are kind of glossy the instruments are kind of glossy the old Edward sets used to be you get your plastic instrument panel and you put on the instruments right and then you put on a piece of clear acetate and you put the panel on top of it so it gives you some depth. Some people like to put in just a little bit of future future floor wax to give it a bit of a pop, yeah. Uh, you can see what I've done in here, um, and I, I'll pass this around. This, this probably will show you all the techniques um, bundled into one, one thing. But, you know, you can, you can do your, like the, for example, you buy a monogram kit, like those kits down there, you pull the instrument panel out, it's a piece of plastic, with, you know, basically plastic things on. You could, you know, dab them up with your Prisma pencil, put a wash on them, and probably get a, get a nice effect, right? Or I, I tend to be uh, very um, um, silly with things, and I like to put each individual instrument in, the right instrument in the right place. Usually if I make my own, I punch them out, punch out the instruments use the Waldron instruments, just drop them in. The Waldron instruments, by the way, already have a clear coat on them. So when you punch them out, you don't have to do anything to them. They've already got a clear coat on them. It looks like glass. Thanks. Do you ever use, uh, because I, I'm guessing that, uh, like with aircraft, you, on your decal sheet, they will tend to give you uh, decals to represent the, the instruments, right? Yep. And do you ever use them? Oh yeah, right. I'll show you right here. Um, I've got um, like there's one here. There's one there. That's um, that's a set for the Hellcat, right? Twenty four scale. Now the instrument panel here is photo etched. You put the photo etched over this. You line it up, and then you could put you know you could put uh, you know it should look pretty good. You could put some future in there. 
if you like. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with this, but this these are neat sets because these um, these air scale guys make some really neat sets, and I thought I had one floating around like this. I buy, I'm a sucker for these. I buy these generic things, plaque placards. Um, instruments and you can get these in I think 72nd, 48th, 32nd and 24th. Just get a whole sheet of American instruments like jet instruments, whatever. So you can get you can get you can get these things. And again, what I'm talking about here works for automobiles and for armor, right? It's the same same thing. But I'll pass this Hellcat around. Again, just be careful. This is a uh, at least 15 minutes of work. Um, and then how many? How watch, watch the uh, watch the uh, the things on the wing there, Adam. If you don't mind, yeah. see the little uh, the flap, actuators. flap actuators. Yeah, yeah. So you can see it. This Airfix kit for a kit of this size is unbelievable. I cannot believe the what Airfix has done Welcome to. The dark side. to uh, you know, but again, back to your reference material, you can get stuff like this now. This is F4 fan. I mean, look at this. Every cockpit, every rivet of this plane in detail, like it's ridiculous. Like you could, there's an expression we say the guy never got out of the wheel wells. Well, that would happen to you here if you just got, you could get sucked into the wheel wells here and never come out, right? Because, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Uh, the cockpits are the same uh, right there. Like, look at that, every instrument um, on there. So there's a series of books. These guys do the Tomcat, I think the, um, the Hornet and the Phantom. They might do some others. But again, um, why I brought the books is you got to start with some reference material. You got to know what you're looking at, right? So um, you can see the toggle switches are what I punched out in there, right? With the, the punch set. And I've actually tilted them different ways, so they look like they've been they've been snapped in different directions. But you can see the the dust cover made out of the compound, right? With in the middle, it's very easy, very effective, rather than just a plastic, blob, you know, blob. So it's very easy to do. So you see, I've got a hole in the middle. I'll just set the stick in there, yeah. and uh, another thing I like it's ready to go. Sets over like those newer ones, like UFM Thanks. or whatever, is the Waldron ones. The thing you punch through is clear, so it's really nice when you're trying to, let's say, punch out a canopy mm. on a circle. You can see it where the newer sets aren't as, you know, I just looked them up. They're on a separate company now. Uh, it's 109 for the sub miniature. It's from a company called kitlinks.com. How many have an extra set? I'm sure somebody else has. I'm sure somebody else has made them. Anyways, I know I've only got a few more minutes, so I can. Why not, how about I answer some questions if anybody has? The, the F box to me is that that's not a mixed. That's to right out of the tube. That's where you have to mix the tube. I'm sorry. The, the epoxy for the tomato. Yeah, there's two pieces. It is two. It's just like bad chewing gum. You just take it out and it's hard in the hands, <laughs> right? It's, it's kind of hard in the hands, eh? Then uh, you know, just. Uh, yeah, there's just two pieces like that. Have you ever tried the polyester putty? I don't know what it is. I bought some. I got all excited. There you go. Oh, just mix the two together. And how long can you work with it before it starts to hurt? Well, this is the, this here is the uh, the quick type. It says right. So I would say you've got an hour that you could really go to town on it. Now there's another one called the fine grain that they make, there's two types. So I mean, I don't know what, I, I don't know why you can't have a quick dry fine grain. It's either you get the fine grain or the quick dry, quick type. But it's all the same, Dave, Dave Gurton um, brought some good material, um, this compound he got from the art, the art store in Toronto, I forget the name of it, but there's all, there's different compounds you can use, but this is easy, I just get the Zobian toy, right, just run in there and. and you can just paint right on it. You, you just paint right over, I prime it first. Yeah. So you could, like the epoxy scalp, I, I, that, that's the one. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, epoxy scalp. It, it's basically the same stuff, except this is a lot more accessible here in London, right? And let's face it, how much are you going to use? You know, people, oh my gosh, it was $8, and I'm going, like, hurt me, right? You've got it. Sorry about your speaker, Stuart. The number is so. 870771. Here comes Peter. Peter? Okay. So, does that answer your question? Any other questions before um, before I get the hook um, about what you might want to do to the cockpits? Uh, you know, washes. 
you want to put them in, wash to taste. Um, you know, you don't want to, to me, sometimes people over weather cockpits, looks like the guy was killed in it. Um, you know, you don't want to, I don't think you want to do that. Maybe in Eastern European airplanes, you can get a little bit of dirt on the floor or North Vietnamese aircraft where they're walking around in, in you know, rougher conditions. But I think that on carriers and things like that, I mean, you want to be, you want to do a little bit of scuffing. And, you know, another thing, everybody, when you're doing your weathering in your cockpit, everybody wants to automatically weather down to metal. Well, the thing is, you got to realize that they prime some quite often before they put paint on. So sometimes you can weather down to your paint, down to your primer, and then down to your your bare metal, right? So that's um, other basic cockpit things. Catch edges, like use your, your pencils, and you know, you've got an edge, a cockpit sill, just run it along, catch the edge, give it a bit of pop. That's the word I always use. You want to give the cockpit pop. And there's different ways to do it. You don't want to just look into it as a black hole. I know if you do British aircraft, never paint the cockpit black. That's, if it is black, paint it gray, like a dark gray, and then put a wash in, and then you can get the illusion of depth and black. And like this seat here, I'm getting excited. This is the seat for my big Hellcat, and I'm excited to uh, start weathering that, and then, um, you know, putting belts on it and detail on it. That'll be kind of cool. This is like the biggest seat I've ever built. Um, so that is, you know, just some of the things that I that I do, right? With, uh, and again, there's much, much more, obviously. And everybody here's got good ideas in their own camps where they're they're working. So, um, I just uh, was happy to come and share a few ideas with you guys, some tools and basic things that uh, that we have. So, how long does it take on average? How long does a model take you? 10, 15 years? <laughs> well, my my Tomcat. My Tomcat, my Tomcat that I took to the IPMS Nationals took me three years to build. I've got a whole bunch on the go. They're in different stages. Like right now, I'll be honest with you guys. Where you know, I was, I went, I went crazy on this one. I mean, look, look how far it's come. It's ready to go. And you know, you'll notice that where I've been stymied is rivets. So I'm thinking. How am I going to duplicate Airfix rivets that look the same so, and get them even? I mean, everybody can go, oh, Larry, use the wheel. And I'm going, yeah, I can use the wheel. But you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Belcher Bits decal, rivet decal film. And I'm just going to lay it along. And then I'm going to take something sharp. And that should give me my distance from my rivets. Yeah. So because there's nothing worse than just haphazard rivets. So I want the, you'll notice when I filled the seam there, I lost my rivets in the top and I buffed it out. When I filled the seam under there, I lost some rivets on the belly, but I tried to preserve the rivets over most of the aircraft and then I'll be, so I will be restoring them. Yeah, I'll restore, yeah, taking them back. So thanks for your, your attention and your interest, gentlemen. Um, Larry, thank you.